fill hell with you all. Then Allah says, you'll get all, all, except my purified ones. The Bible says, Satan deceived the whole world. And you and I are in the world. What did he deceive us about? The greatest deception that Satan could bring is to deceive us where God is concerned and where the Messiah and the Mahdi is concerned. In the sayings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there's a ma mas masihi El Dajjal. There's a false Messiah that will claim that he is the Messiah, but he will be deceiving the people so that when the real Messiah figure comes into the world, the people won't recognize him. The people will persecute him. The people will try to kill him and his followers. In the Bible, in 2 Thessalonians, it reads, that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin or the wicked one would be revealed, revealed. Look at the word, revealed. Reveal means truth uncovered that has been hidden from the eyes and the ears of the world. So Jesus said, I thank thee, Father in heaven, for keeping these things from the wise and the prudent men and revealing them unto babes. This means that some people who are considered babies, children, novices, inexperienced people will be chosen for the ultimate of revelation. What is the ultimate of revelation? It is the absolute truth of God himself, of the devil, of the true religion of God, of the people that populate the earth, the absolute knowledge of everything that has been ruling. And these babes are going to get a revelation. In it will be the scepter of rulership and power if they're strong enough to hold on to what Allah reveals because the world is not going to like it because that means that the old ruler's time is up. The religious leaders are not going to like it because it means that their day of ruling the sphere of religion is over. The political leaders are not going to like it because the new rulership and the revelation that God will give to the babes will upset their power to rule. So the whole world is going to come after those babies. They tell me I, I should take a little water. Most of us have no concept of God at all in our minds. If I say spoon, you can close your eyes and see a spoon. If I say fork, if I say book, 
If I say sun, moon, stars, God. Nothing comes to your mind. How come the most important being, 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 the most important being, and nothing comes to our mind? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, that if we could only come into the true knowledge of Jesus, we would be free overnight. That means that Jesus is the key. Well, the Muslim may not like that because to the Muslim, Muhammad is the key. Both are correct. Jesus of 2,000 years ago was a prophet. This meeting is being recorded. Muhammad of 1,400 years ago was the end of prophets. These were two distinct men. At the end of the world of Satan, there will be two men again. One called Mahdi and one called Masi the Mahdi and the Messiah, two men working together in the judgment of the world. That is why Satan has to deceive you about Jesus because Jesus is the most important being. And this Jesus that comes as Massey and Muhammad that comes is one and the same person. The Mahdi is different. I, 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 uh, now, dear Christians and Muslims and Jews, all of you are expecting somebody. I didn't say something. I said some body. The Christians are looking for the Christ. But you're not looking for a spirit. Who are you looking for? You're looking for a man. But let's let's stop fooling around then. Let's stop talking about spirit and understand the man that's supposed to be here. The Messiah is a man. The Mahdi is a man. But these are men embodied with the spirit, the wisdom, the power of the eternal God manifest in a human being coming to set human beings free and to destroy the wicked human beings and to set up a government of righteousness. So the Bible says, unto us a child is born Unto us, a son is given, and a government shall be upon his shoulder. And he, he, not it, he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, and of the increase of his government of peace, there shall be no end.
but he's a man born, born, born of a woman. The Mahdi is also a man coming out of the family of Muhammad. He's a man that got so much anointing of power from the eternal God that he is self-guided. He's self-guided and he comes to guide that which has lost the path back to the straight path of Allah. He is so powerful. It says he will break the cross. I don't want Christians to be upset. Bring that board over. trying to remember where I was. <laughs> Since you've been under the cross, have you been suffering? And you sure ashamed of your black self and your black people and your roots in Africa. Why are you ashamed? Because a liar told you that your people were running around in Africa with bones in their nose, living in jungles, and had built no civilization. And you should thank God that the white man came and got your black self out of Africa and brought you to America to civilize you Negroes, niggers, and colored people. And you believe that. But yet, at the Million Man March, and at the Million Family March, I stood in front of a glorious Capitol building built by your black brothers and sisters, slaves, built the Capitol, built the White House, but they were found in the jungles. Who taught them how to build the mansions for the master, how to sew clothes for the master's woman? how to teach the master's woman how to cook. So on a hill, far away, stood an old rugged cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. The Ku Klux Klan, when they want to terrorize black people, they burn a cross in your yard. And that's to let you know that not Jesus coming for you, but an enemy coming. When you see that cross, when you see it again, it's on the grave. Go 
those already dead. You see it on the ambulance, those on the way. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God whose proper name is Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the greeting words of peace. We say it in the ancient tongue of Arabic, Assalam alaikum. Welcome, 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 dear beloved brothers and sisters, family, friends, and all of you who are regular viewers of the Image and Nation show. My name is Brother Leo Muhammad, and sitting next to me is my beloved sister, Sister Claudia Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, family, and welcome to another edition of the Image and Nation show. I pray that you are all safe and well. Welcome, dear family. Thank you once again for tuning in. As always, we encourage you at this time to call a friend, a relative, family member, a loved one, tell them to tune in right now to the Imagination Show, which goes out live each and every Thursday evening, starting at 6.30. We go live on both Zoom and YouTube. Dear family, I'm always very, very uh, honored and privileged to have the opportunity to come to you wherever you may be viewing this, wherever you may be looking at us at the present time, whether you are with us live or you're viewing at some later time. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. This show is designed to provoke thought. It is designed to enlighten. It is designed to cause us to engage that faculty that we have all been blessed with, a faculty called imagination. Hence why the show is called Image A Nation. We have broken it up. We have broken it down because we want each and every one of us to come to the realization that whatever we can conceive in our minds, we can bring it, dear family, into reality. And that's what the imagination show is all about and we you know we really just don't take it for granted uh, that we have such a, a blessing to talk to people all over the planet and so as always we encourage you to let us know where you are currently tuned in because we we are most interested in learning where you are uh, dear brothers and sisters and so let me uh, begin like this. Um, on behalf of myself, uh, Sister Claudia, our children, the rest of our family, and the community of believing brothers and sisters, we send our deepest and heartfelt condolences to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Mother Khadija Farrakhan, and the Farrakhan family for the loss of their beloved son and a great helper in the cause, Brother Joshua Farrakhan. Uh, sadly, dear beloved family, uh, Saturday um, of last week, uh, we lost our brother and uh, we wanted to just share that uh, news with you. And we pray that Almighty God Allah is pleased with our brother. I have been uh, blessed to have met with this wonderful human being 
on several occasions over the years. And I think the last time I spoke to him on the telephone was just literally last May. And I, I have to say, I, I'm one of these people, I don't like it uh, often in truth when um, people pass away or uh, funerals come around. Uh, oftentimes I find, in, in my view, I feel people like to speak well of people after they've gone, after they've uh, passed away, after they've returned to Almighty God, Allah. But I, I say that to say this because uh, I don't want to come across as one of these people who just say things because of a particular uh, circumstance. But what I wanted to say was that, uh, you know, in my view, in my personal uh, opinion, he is one of the most beautiful human beings that I've ever met. Each and every time that I was blessed to be in his presence, he was always, always mm -hmm. just seeking to help, seeking to see what he could do to assist those of us who had flown from London, from the UK, to be in Chicago or in Detroit or wherever we were at the time. And what he was always desirous of doing uh, we 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 didn't have to ask. He just wanted to get us to go and see his father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he never ever failed in that endeavor. And so I'm forever thankful and grateful to Almighty God Allah for this wonderful, wonderful human being, uh, Brother Joshua Farrakhan who really was a tremendous helper uh, for his father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I just wanted to remind all of us that um, uh, according to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it was uh, Brother Joshua who was really instrumental in encouraging and, and, and really helping the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to initiate and to complete that 58 part series uh, of lectures that the minister did. I think it started in uh, 2013 entitled The Time and What Must Be Done. And I would encourage all of you, dear family, uh, you know, to go to YouTube uh, um, or to go to the, um, can you get it on NOI.org? Yeah, that's right. Go to NOI.org. Yeah. Uh, uh, say what is it? Media, NOI. media at noi dot org, and um, you know, look I'm for sure the time and what must be done. They are approximately an hour in duration, and there are fifty eight parts. And I say to you, with all humility, if you were to watch all fifty eight parts studiously yeah. as a student. Yeah. And to really study, it will lift you and raise you from wherever you currently mm -hmm. are, wherever you currently reside, into a much higher uh, spiritual awareness. And it will give you life and life more abundantly. So I would really encourage that. And, you know, as I said, Brother uh, Joshua was really um, a great... Um, uh, inspiration to his father um, to initiate that and to make uh, that happen. So their family... Um, well, I would add, if, yes. if you want to know more about our brother Joshua, tune in to the People's Podcast with our young brother Joshua. Um, the People's Podcast, where they can That's watch. right. Go, go, go to YouTube and search for The People's Podcast with brother Joshua Muhammad. And uh, you will see um, interviews oh, with uh, Brother Joshua Farrakhan. There's a couple on there of myself as well. But, um, you know, um, check it out, dear family, because, again, Brother Joshua, uh, in his expression, he was extremely down to earth mm. and very, very honest and very forthright 
in the way in which he would, um, you know, teach uh, about himself, his life, and his um, recollections mm -hmm. uh, of the history of the nation of Islam. He was the young brother who was there at the time when they said, or when it was declared, that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad had passed away. Right. And it was Brother Joshua who in turn informed uh, his father, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, because he was right there at the time in the hospital, Mercy Hospital at that time. So dear family, he is a significant person in the growth and the development of the nation of Islam since really 1977, when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan determined to rebuild his father's work and his father's house. And so I, I would highly recommend that you do check out the, um, People's, Podcast. the People's Podcast with Brother Joshua Muhammad. Uh, and as I said, with a, a number of interviews, I think there's four. about four in mm -hmm. total. A number of interviews um, featuring our brother, brother Joshua Farrakhan. May Almighty God Allah be pleased with all of his good works. And can I say on that, I, th I think you really have to be with Allah God to get through these trials. Otherwise, it's, for myself personally, it's very difficult mm. when you're trying tried and tested if you're not with Allah, God. Yes. And the teachings, they are life-saving teachings that we have here through Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's right. They will save your life. They can get you through anything if you just apply the teachings to your life. Yes. You know, you can, the minister gets you to see things through Allah's way, to mm. see why people pass and at particular times. He just gives you such great insight That's right. to life. So I say to anyone who's not listening to Minister Louis Farrakhan, try it this evening, tune in to NOI.org and really take on what our Minister Farrakhan is teaching us. Yes, and also the Janaza, yes. which is the funeral service held uh, by Muslims, for Muslims, that will take place this Saturday. Uh, on Saturday. Uh, and again, if you go to NOI.org, um, you will get all of the information that you need at the appropriate time to log on uh, if you would like to witness the Janaza uh, prayer service for our beloved brother, Brother Joshua Farrakhan. Dear family, as stated before, welcome. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Imagination Show. Before we get into our subject matter, we really just wanted to again highlight um, this reality because once again, we have reached that time of the year that I often refer to as the silly season when people really lose their minds and become very, very silly indeed when people, and especially black people, are encouraged to go on wild spending sprees, starting with tomorrow's so-called Black Friday sales and leading all the way up to the pagan commercial enterprise called Christmas. And then it goes beyond that into Boxing Day and all these other days. Now they've got, um, what is it? Something Saturday. I don't know about the Sunday, <laughs> Some, but I know it's something uh, Monday. Was it? Uh, I can't even remember. Uh, we, um. we, yes, but um, you know, there's all of these commercial uh, names and titles that are given to these shopping days now. Mm. Uh, Cyber Monday, oh, yeah, I think Cyber. it is Cyber Monday. Yeah, um, to encourage people to go and spend their money in what they call sales. So, dear family. Again, uh, as I think it was Sister Claudia the other day who reminded us uh, that the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been encouraging us. I think it really, really, uh, really started um, from uh, 10, 10, 15 
back in 2015 when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan reminded us of uh, Martin Luther King's um, declaration that we should redistribute the pain that we suffer as a people by boycotting Christmas, boycotting this season of you know, wild and inordinate spending by keeping our money in our pockets, mm -hmm. and therefore depriving those uh, merchants of the wealth that they accrue mm -hmm. at this period in time. And, you know, we are once again encouraging you, dear family, keep your money in your pocket. Don't go getting no tinsel mm -hmm. and putting it all over your place and extra lights and to, to run up your light bill and all of the other foolish stuff that we do and the eggnog and the, the, the you know, the Covassier uh, cognac or whatever it is that we're planning on getting into the mm -hmm. house now to make ourselves drunk That's right. and crazy. Uh, a whole lot of um, things that we do during this time period, which really, really, really... Has is, nothing to do with Jesus. No, absolutely nothing to do with Jesus. But worse than that, you know, so much of what we do during this time period is absolutely detrimental mm -hmm. to our health. Well, I think, anyway, Black Friday, we should take it for what it means and buy Black. Yes, shop yeah. with ourselves. Well, if you're going to shop, if you're going to buy yeah. anything, uh, try to go to a black person. Yeah, go to our own. You know, stop supporting these evil people. Because one of our listeners, one of our sisters, was assaulted this evening. I from... think it was a verbal verbal assault. Yeah, but, he threw uh, but, but he was threat. Yes, he, he did. Something. Yes, so it was a physical assault. Yes. He actually threw something at her in the shop. Yes. And I think she said he even he had a knife. threatened her yes. with a knife. Yes. And this is like another one of these Asian shopkeepers. That's right. You know, and we got to stop um, really spending our money yes. uh, with these people, uh, family, because they don't love us. <laughs> they don't like us. They like our money, uh, but they really have nothing but contempt uh, for us as a people. And so, again, we're encouraging uh, black people to shop black, to come together, unite, mm -hmm. um, trade together, um, save together, pool resources together, because this constant refrain to unity uh, really needs to stop just being talk, mm -hmm. and all of us need to start walking it. We're going to be forced to anyway. Yeah, it's either we yes, do it or we'll be forced. This to. is what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, and the honorable minister Lewis Farrakhan has made it abundantly clear do for self or suffer the consequences. Do for self or suffer the consequences. We are, all of us right now, you know, in danger. Before of suffering you, the consequences. Go ahead. I say, before you go into that, mm -hmm. where has the month gone? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's nearly, we're nearly at the end of the month already. It's gone so quickly. November has just gone like that. A time, man. A time. It's time very, waits for no yeah, man. Absolutely. A time is not waiting, dear family. Uh, before you, before you blink. That's right. And you can't really afford to waste time now. You, no. We really have to start being serious with the life that we're blessed with. Really mm. think seriously about what we want to do mm -hmm. and making a change for our children, our children's children for generations to come. It's, mm. it's in our hands now. That's right. That's right, beloved. Welcome to episode 105. 105 of the Image and Nation show. And this week's title, uh, dear family, is The Colonized Mind of Blacks. The Colonized Mind. And I put mind in brackets, you know, because really, when thinking about this particular show this evening, that's really what kept on reverberating in my thinking 
it was really about our thinking. It was really about our minds. It was really about, I heard the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan say one time how when we sign our name as Tony Smith or John Jones or, you know, whatever European name that we're signing as a depiction of ourselves, what it actually constitutes, what it means is that we're literally out of our minds. Hmm. We're not in our right minds. When we as Black people, as original people, as Africans, uh, walking around wearing somebody else's name. Mm -hmm. And what it means is, dear family, is that when we are wearing somebody else's name, it literally means that we belong to, to the one mm -hmm. who named us such. And even though now we are doing it via remote control in the sense that our children are now being born and we're giving them these same European names, it, it doesn't negate the fact that there was a European one time who forced that name onto us whether we were Kunta Kenti or any of the other hundred million plus who were forced into the holes of ships and destroyed as a human reality on that voyage through the Atlantic Ocean, reaching the so-called Caribbean islands and Brazil, South America and North America and up and down this country, places like Bristol and Liverpool, these ports took us as enslaved people and proceeded to use and abuse us for their, for, to build their infrastructure and their cities and at the same time destroyed us, denigrated us, dehumanized us, made us into just workhorses for them. And in that process, you see, not only did they colonize the Caribbean and make these colonies and these places where um, the colonial masters ruled and used enslaved people to earn them vast amounts of wealth, it wasn't just our physical environment. It wasn't just our physical bodies that were colonized, dear family. It was our very minds. And I think sometimes uh, we overlook the fact that a scientific job was done in order to affect the mind of Black men and women in such a way that we continue to this day to suffer from the ill effects of that colonization of the mind. I've seen recently online, you know, people talking about decolonizing, decolonizing the mind, decolonizing this, that, and the other. And it's, it's, it's appropriate and it needs to be done. But, you know, we have to understand that unless these things are addressed, unless these things are challenged and refuted and turned around, they literally stay in place. Again, I, I refer you to the uh, Willie Lynch letter that mm -hmm. some say is a forgery or whatever. Let me tell you something. You know, I see Willie Lynch at play every day when I observe mm -hmm. Black people. Absolutely the way we treat one another, the way that the level of suspicion, the level of hatred, the level of negativity that flows between people who should be brothers and sisters and should be loving one another. No, I'm, it's very clear that uh, Willie Lynch has taken a hold and we carry out his instructions mm -hmm. 100%. And the sad reality, in my humble opinion, is that quite often it's very clear that we're not even aware hmm. uh, that we are, 
you know, following a program of that sort. Dear family, the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14, when describing the Son of Man or Jesus, it says, the hair of his head was white like wool and white as snow, and his eyes were like a blazing fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. You know, I was just reading that scripture, and I was thinking about, well, have you ever heard any white man whose voice sounds like rushing waters or roaring waters? You know, when have you seen a white man with hair like lamb's wool? You see? And in sugar. <laughs> well, but but some of them, like Tom Jones and some of these, they've got black. They, they've got black in their ancestry. Uh, some of them have. Mm -hmm. And so, but they're not, they're not wearing the original wool. Hmm. That's right. They're not wearing, you know, sometimes when I talk about these things, I wish I still had some of my hair, but, um, <laughs> but uh, it's all gone now, uh, dear family. But um, just those of you who have got your natural hair mm -hmm. still. It's like cotton wool. Check it out, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. And by the way, my wife's hair is it's all natural. Uh, and if she wets it and whatever, then again, it turns into wool. But it's it's well, wool. When I leave it to, if I wet it, mm -hmm. it will go curly. But once I leave it just to dry, mm -hmm. with nothing, it will go like wool. Yeah, and that I used to get teased when I was younger. Yeah, because they used to say, "Oh, your hair's like cotton wool," mm. and I used to hate that. But now I've learned to love it. Of course, of course, uh, and uh, it's vital. The mm -hmm. hair, in its crinkled or curly state, and whatever, coiled. it's it coiled. That's the right yeah. term I was looking for. <laughs> it's full of energy and vitality. It's it's such a shame uh, that so many of us run away from the gifts uh, that we've been given and that other people wish they had. And, you know, we think that God made a mistake. And I'm saying these things, dear family, because I know uh, many of you who are regular followers of the imagination show i know it doesn't necessarily pertain to you because you have a level of consciousness and you're moving in a particular way and in a particular direction right now and it, and i know you if you notice when i speak i will often say we i don't really say you and you i say we i include myself in it because not that I see myself necessarily like that, but I use the inclusive terminology uh, because I don't want to be pointing fingers at our people as if, oh, you're there and I'm here. No, we are all in this thing together. And what I'm saying is that it's, in my view, critically important that, for instance, when we look at these two images, that we appreciate just how vital, just how vibrant, just how powerful it is to be a black man. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about this character, Jesus or Jesus or Isa, I mean, there's so many wonderful terms that are used for him, the Christ. No, I was just that, thinking, oh, sorry, yeah. No, no, I was going to say that... It, he never looked like that. He's not a white man. But man, oh man, oh man, some of us really struggle. I'm talking about black people. And you say, again, I said, some of us, not me. I have no difficulty mm -hmm. realizing who he is and what he really looks like. But I'm saying some of us, man. And we're actually in denial. So we're talking here about the the colonization of our minds, whereby uh, even surface level, we might say, yeah, yeah, I, I know and I agree. Mm -hmm. But but underneath, 
that that surface level, we still are not convinced of the reality of the beauty and the power and the majesty mm -hmm. of our blackness. Right. There's still some doubt, some element of doubt. There's still some part of the programming that ill affects us to the point where we walk around more inferior in the way in which we carry ourselves and conduct ourselves than in a manner of assertiveness, mm -hmm. self-determination, and power. Many of us don't do that because something has happened to us based on this type of imagery that we have grown up all of our lives with. The Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar, when he was just talking, he was literally talking about that Jesus mm -hmm. and, the, and this fake imagery and asking the brothers and sisters in the audience, you know, close your eyes. Can you see a spoon? Can you see a, a, a truck? Can you see a bus? Can you see this? Can you see that? And of course, when you close your eyes, you can see all of these things. But now close your eyes. Can you see God? And nothing comes to mind, apart from maybe uh, the one that we've been told is the son of God. And what does he look like? Be honest. Be honest. How many of you see a black man? Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll say it like this. How many of you see the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? How many of you see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Because I'm telling you, dear family, these biblical personalities, these biblical characters are not talking about ancient people. Mm -hmm. They are really talking about people who have walked among us and people who continue to walk among us today. Because as I've said so many times in the past, these books are not books of history. These books are books of prophecy talking about today. Go ahead, sister. I was going to say, so just imagine if you're out with your father mm -hmm. and you've lost him. Hmm. So you go to the police. And the police says, okay, what does, what does he, look, he like? look like? So you say, yeah, his hair is white, like wool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, his color is like polished bronze. Burnished brass. Yeah, burnished brass. Yeah. Who, who are they going to look for? Exactly. That image or it's, that image? Exactly. exactly. But it's there, written in the book. Yeah. And you say to people, you, you quote it to people, and they, ah, uh, well... You know, they just no, well, no. Well, the first thing they tell you is, well, does it, his color yeah, does doesn't it matter. matter. But <laughs> so then the point is, if his color didn't matter, That's right. why did you paint him That's white? Right. Why is it that almost everywhere you look on the planet, That's right. you've got this fake image? And I deliberately didn't pick a, a good picture either because I just hate seeing this thing. I remember yeah, watching, yeah, I remember watching mm -hmm. a um, a great comedic movie. Mm -hmm. And one of the jokes in it was... Oh, uh, yes. picture on the wall. Yes. <laughs> and they say, who's that? Yeah. And there were, two, there were two pictures on the wall. And, uh, mm. you know, uh, everybody there, who is it? And he said, um, man, that's Jesus. He said, no, the other guy, but every, all of them, mm. all of the black people in the movie knew that that was supposed to be Jesus. But yes. they, were, they, were, they were really interested in knowing who the other mm -hmm. person was who happened to be black. Dear family, I hope you are all good and uh, doing well uh, because I just want us to, I just want us to think today, hmm. you see, because this thing is very, very deep and it's hurting us as a people because we don't understand the power of it. And as a result of not understanding the power of it, we literally think that it's not having an effect. And then, and then also when we see its effects working on uh, a lot of our people, we don't attribute what we see our people doing to the programming, to the colonization. We just become hateful necessarily of that individual, that person who is doing the wrong thing, not recognizing that they themselves 
have been victimized. See? <laughs> and then even when some of our people attempt to correct the distortion or worse, the deception, we still can't get it right because we've been so thoroughly damaged mm. that we need to depict him looking as close to the image of the white man as possible. I mean, look at this. This is so, somebody, you know, online is, is trying to make a comparison. And they've, you know, depicting, they're depicting a black Jesus. But look at the hair. Yes, why would they do that? <laughs> you no, know, because this is the point I'm trying to make. It's like we still got to try to image him yeah. the way in which the Caucasian has imaged him. Mm -hmm. So in truth and in reality, it's a pale, uh, it's a pale imitation. And that's what we have to guard against, that we're not just saying, oh, Jesus is a black man, because we are trying to get one up on the white man. No, it's we can't be we can't be saying it thinking it's as big a lie as the lie mm -hmm. that the enemy told in the first place. And 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 that's a danger, you know, that we ourselves don't believe it, but just as a as a get back, just as some kind of payback just as some kind of almost like uh, name calling, then, you know, we think that we can dress somebody up uh, to look in a particular way, wearing robes and all this kind of stuff. But um, when he comes, dear family, the scripture says he, he's wearing dyed garments. He ain't coming necessarily looking like this fake depiction. Mm -hmm. So when you see a man now dressed immaculately in a suit and a bow tie, and he's talking to you in a particular way, and his voice roars like Russian water, you may be put off because that's not the image that the enemy has given. The enemy has given this fake image I was watching a, a, a thing again. There was a like a trailer for some movie. I don't know, to be honest with you, even whether that movie's out now, whether it's been shown. I'm not talking about like The Passion of the Christ. You remember back in the day that mm -hmm. came out, but there's a new one now. And um, they got a, a white guy looking similar to this white guy who's supposed to be Jesus. And, you know, he's talking very soft and in these little parables. And I'm like, man, you're still pushing that. And I can just see so many of our people who will just go and go and watch that. Mm -hmm. And once again, it goes in. their identity has been knocked off. Mm -hmm. Their self-confidence has been eroded and destroyed. And once again, they're looking at this uh, Caucasian fella this fake as this wonderful human being who really is a depiction of us. Dear family, I just want us to imagine the psychological harm that has been done to black people in the acceptance of this image as the Last Supper of Jesus and his disciples. And how this acceptance and the acquiescence, that, that's another way of saying acceptance. It's like the bowing down to this kind of submission to this acceptance and acquiescence as fueled the false ideas of both white supremacy and black inferiority. That's what this has done. This is the, the, these images that we have now accepted and acquiesced to, they fuel white supremacy and they fuel black inferiority. There's the, these, these are powerful, powerful images 
that we have been fed all our lives to colonize Mm -hmm. the black mind with falsity. And by extension, it fuels white privilege and even the so-called white savior complex. And I, I was reading up on, you know, some of this, this white savior complex. And it was really, it's almost like it really had very little to do with us. And it was really talking about white people and how, you know, they must be careful about wanting to help out the poor black people and having this white savior complex, like they know best, Mm -hmm. they can help us, they can do better for us than we can do for ourselves, et cetera. And I was thinking about that. And yes, of course, I'm sure that's a significant part of it, but then that's also assuming that every white philanthropist or every white liberal or every white do-gooder actually has good in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Some of them are masquerading and perpetrating a fraud. Some of them are pretending to be a savior. Some of them are pretending to have good intentions when in reality, their intentions are absolutely diabolical and wicked. So I just I just didn't like the way the whole uh, white savior complex was being spoken about as something that they have to guard against and not really uh, examining how the white savior complex impacts the victim of it, which is black people. (laughs) You see, when we start seeing them and thinking of them, because when we talk about white savior complex, I can almost guarantee that every black person really, when we think about it, you know, we are seeing it from the perspective of the harm that it does to us in that we have got that white mind. We are thinking that, yeah, you know, they're really important to us and we can't live without them and we can't do without them and we need them and they're so good and they're so kind. And even I heard the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan talking one time and he was talking about the way in which some of us as brothers, as men, as black men, the way we talk rough to our women. Mm -hmm. And then that slippery snaky white man will come and talk gentle smooth you see and and our women should be spoken to in a gentle way Mm -hmm. should be treated with dignity and with kid gloves and with honor and respect and raised onto a yes but but many of us we don't like that we see that as some kind of wishy-washy soft thing and we've just got to be so macho that we're gonna just treat her like she's some worthless thing and then we wonder why so many of our women now are now drifting Mm -hmm. towards the enemy (laughs) i just want us to think dear family because you see The white savior complex is a real thing in terms of the way they think of of being superior and, you know, they're going to, it's live aid, okay? Mm -hmm. Feed the world. We're going to help these poor Negroes. Mm -hmm. We're going to help these poor starving Ethiopians. We're going to help them. We're going to you know, um, look out for them, you know, we're going to represent them, we're going to make sure that they uh, are not being exploited. And and there's, there's, there's a ton of these people around now today that um, think like this. And quite often, as I said before, a a lot of them are, are evil, and they they actually have no good intent. But there are some who have that good intent, but their good intent, I think, what does Lauren Hill say? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. That's one of her tracks from Lauren Hill Unplugged. The road to hell 
is paved with good intentions. See, because yeah, your intent may be good, but just the fact that you're coming with this attitude. See, I always think about Africa and how we're constantly being told how much the West gives aid to Africa. Aid, you know, we, we, we've got an aid budget for mm -hmm. Africa. But I'm thinking, well, man, you've been giving Africa all this aid for all this time. Mm -hmm. Why can I not see any improvement? Mm -hmm. Why am I not seeing any growth, any development, any infrastructure that you have provided or assisted with all your aid? And you know why, dear family? I read a statistic that for every pound or every dollar that is given in aid that goes into Africa, 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 dollars or pounds is leaving Africa. Mm -hmm. It's a trick. Mm -hmm. right? A big trick. You know, it's not real, dear family. It really isn't. And it's very sad that many of us, our minds have been so colonized that on a logical level, we can read that, we can see that we're actually not benefiting from this aid, from this philanthropy, from this um, help mm -hmm. <laughs> from Europe and from these Europeans. But what do we do? In the Christian church, they've got a term. It says, go along to get along. Do you do you, do we appreciate how many of our people are doing that? Going along with something that they can clearly see is wrong just to get along with some diabolical people, some people who mean no good at all. But we will go along. And some they say, don't rock the boat. Or don't bite the hand that feeds you. Because we, we're getting aid from these people. But the aid is not assisting us. It's not helping us. You keeping a people dependent on you mm -hmm. for aid mm -hmm. when the people have wealth and abundance under their foot. But you're feeding them some little crumbs from your table while you're exploiting the wealth in the ground beneath their feet. My goodness, man. Go ahead. Can I just read something? Yeah. This is from Message to the Black Man by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I've read this bit before a few months ago. Read it again. Uh, it's um, help self before helping others. Many of my people, the so-called Negroes, say we should help the nations of Africa, which are awakening. This has been said as if we owned America. <laughs> we are so foolish. What part of America do you have that you can offer toward helping Africa? Who is independent, the nations of Africa or we? The best act we the best act would be to request the independent governments of Africa and Asia to help us. We are the ones who need help. We have little or nothing to offer as help to others. We should begin to help at home first. So, and it's, that's so beautiful, beloved. It's so powerful because, again, a, a lot of us think like that. And whilst we, again, it's good intentions, you know, we're sending these old computers mm -hmm. that we no longer use mm -hmm. to Africa. We send old clothes. Mm -hmm. We send chairs that we no longer, I mean, you know, see, is it really help? And while we're doing that, what have we got here right. for ourselves? What, what unity do we have? What infrastructure do we have here? None. Because why? Because we've, again, integrated ourselves mm -hmm. into somebody else's mind, right. into somebody else's 
way of doing things into somebody else's world. And we don't believe that we need anything mm -hmm. for ourselves, okay. anything of our own. What did, how did that article start from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, help self first then before self. others. Right. You see, but we, we don't do that. We, we, we're trying to help everybody else which is no help at all in truth, because you know there's a law that really says if you if you can't help yourself, you can't help nobody else. <laughs> you see, so so we're like we're lawbreakers, mm -hmm. thinking that we can just do whatever we want to do, as opposed to doing it the way in which it's been prescribed. That's right. And I heard the honourable minister Liz Farrakhan. Um, I was listening the other day. And he actually said, you want to quickly go and run to Africa to live. But what about sorting out your mind? You see what you're saying again. Mm -hmm. Don't bring what we have here mm -hmm. over there. And I know a, a sister, she was in the Gambia the other day. And she said the Gambians are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And what she was worried about mm -hmm. is that people over here mm -hmm. going over there mm -hmm. and treating them how white people. Treat us. No, for real. I, I've seen it, you, beloved. And you said that. No, well. I've seen it. Yes. I've seen it. You know, many of us mm -hmm. leave here and go to Africa, mm -hmm. even the Caribbean. Yes. But guess what? We're a white man, white woman in black skin. Mm -hmm. And we're taking so much of the corruption and so much of the madness that we've learned here there and this colonization of our mind is not a lightweight thing mm -hmm. we have to um really think about it dear family because it has to be destroyed that that program that colony if, if there was a colony of mice if there was a colony of fleas if there was a colony of of bed bugs you, you have to exterminate them. You have to get rid of that colonial infestation in order that that mind might be cleaned so that it can actually start to think right and function right. And so, you know, this image is very powerful. And you can find it in the homes of black people. Oh, exactly. When we were younger, whenever we'd go to my mother's friend's homes, you would see that picture. You'd see the so-called picture of Jesus. You'd see the so-called picture of Mary all on the walls. Those, And they're just subtly sowing seeds in your mind. And it goes deep. It does go deep. That's the point. It does. That's the point. You see, you in say, okay, you have a, a, a baby, you have a child, and then that child is one year old, two years old. Then they walk in in the living room, they say, Who's they say, that? They, well, they, they'll ask, and, and, and they'll tell them, yeah. they'll say, oh, that's Jesus, mm. or that's the disciples, or mm. that, you know, and that child, we don't even appreciate mm -hmm. just how not seeing no black people that's there. How immediately we've set a benchmark of inferiority because evidently the righteous people, the people who are close to God, the people who are, you know, the people to be looked up to, we don't, we're not among them. That's right. <laughs> I think the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that um, they, there was a Bible or some Bible Inside. salesman. Or was it an insight? But but the, I think they it was said the Bible it, said, yes. but they had that yes. sort of like images mm -hmm. in the Bible, yeah. and um, the minister's mother mm -hmm. asked them, you know, that's right. Where's the black people right. in 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 the book kind of mm -hmm. thing? Where's the black people depicted? And uh, I think one of them uh, on one occasion said that oh they're in the kitchen. kitchen yes. <laughs> See, so so again, what does that say? That says that okay, even in heaven, you know this 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 imaginary magical heaven that everybody likes to talk about. Even there, I guess we're going to be the servants, right? Mm -hmm. We're you know we're going to be um, serving everybody else their food. I mean, think about it, dear family. Uh, uh, we 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 
treat these things as lightweight to our real detriment, okay? I think some of us would be shocked at the fact that many of our people seeing an image like this would be angry. I want you to hear me. See, many of our people seeing an image like this would be angry, upset, and suffering from feelings of fear and revulsion that the people in the scriptures look like us and not like our lifelong enemies by whom we have been skillfully groomed and taught to honor, love, and respect them, even against ourselves. I, I just want you to think about that, because I'm not making something up when I'm telling you that we get angry, upset, and have feelings of revulsion at the thought that the disciples <laughs> look like that. Now, why do you think you would have those feelings of anger and upset and revulsion? It's because of what's been sold in our own minds. And, and, and some of us, literally disappointment. Because our whole life expectation. Uh, you, 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 you can hear black people sometimes talk about, oh, when they were young, how they were light, light skinned when they, when they were born. And and they got they've got somehow like by accident they've gotten sort of darker. Yeah, there's this, this, this psychological trauma by just being black. That's why so many of us are using skin creams and 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 using putting blue contact lenses and blonde mm -hmm. blonding our hair and doing all manner of crazy stuff. But you remember, that's how it is in the Caribbean when we would go or to Africa. Oh, don't stay in the sun, you're going to get too black. Yeah, no, for real. There's a whole mm -hmm. philosoph uh, philosophical um, diatribe that's out there yeah. about, um, black. you know, being too black. Horrible. For real. The first time I, uh, you know, we, when, when I was a child growing up in Jamaica, mm -hmm. before I came here. There was a man who lived down the avenue from where we lived. And what was his nickname? What did we call him as children? Black Sambo. Mm. That was what we called him. Yeah. Everybody in the neighborhood was black. There was no white people. But this man was Black Sambo. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to say, uh, dear family, that this thing goes very deep. And many of us are ill-affected. Uh, by it, by the colonization of our minds. Our thinking is the thinking of white supremacy. I listen to some of these rappers, you know, and see, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, make our communities safe, clean and safe places to live. Words to that effect, I'm paraphrasing. Decent, Decent yeah. safe. Clean, you know, this is the this is what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is encouraging black people to do. Clean up mm -hmm. your place, clean up your neighborhoods, make them decent, safe mm -hmm. places to live. You see, you listen to the, some of the rappers, the vast majority, they're not talking about cleaning up no where they live. They want to get out of the hood. Mm -hmm. And where do they want to go? maybe Beverly Hills, some of these places, they want to go where other people are other than themselves. I just want you to think, it's all about getting out. Hmm. See? And if you study us and the way we are, we love all of that. That's why we love to be, oh, I'm the first. Hmm. <laughs> I'm the first professor in this at this particular university or college the first black we love to be the first black to have achieved that or this but it's not necessarily for the benefit of our people it is to gain recognition from somebody else somebody who don't look like us mm. most of our aspirations is to be other 
than ourself. It's not an embracing of self. It's not a love of self. It's not a love of what God created. It is trying to be something that we can never be and that it's foolhardy to even try to be. But dear family, you know, there'll be a couple of people who will understand what I'm saying. Okay, like I said, the vast majority of you, I'm, I'm very sure that you're very conscious that you love yourself. You love your black self. You're like me. You love these black lips. You love this black nose, this broad nose. I love it, man. Helps me breathe more easily. Okay? You love that nice square shoulders that God has blessed you with. You love to have a tapered waist. You love to be an upright person who, when you when somebody views you from the side, your head is not sticking out in that direction while your back is going. You're, you're, you're straight, man. You, you know, you you look like a a, a, a well-balanced, well-rounded, well-put-together human being. You're a well-made man and a well-made woman. Hmm. I, I, I hear you, and I, and I appreciate that you love that about you, but I'm talking to that brother or that sister who recognize when we talked about that upset, that anger, that revulsion at the idea that the people of God look like you, mm. that you yourself, oh, in God. fact, are a man and a woman of God, and that you are not inferior in no way or form, and that to recognize that in yourself is not a form of reverse racism. Imagine, this is how... This is that of conditioned black people whereby some black people, man, hearing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, hearing that strident voice, that uncompromising truth, that, that self-confidence, that power. We, 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 oh man, that's not right. You shouldn't say that. You shouldn't be saying that about, come on, brothers and sisters. Truth is truth. Okay. And we've got to learn to be who God created us to be. We've got to be ourselves. And this constant longing for a false promise of an integration into somebody else's concept of us and a disintegration of the reality of us it can't work. It, we can never, ever be successful as a people who are ashamed of our own self because we've our minds have been colonized. This is really, really critically uh, important that we understand that a lot of us we don't admit that we have these thoughts and these feelings. We try to keep these things suppressed and hidden. But part of the reason for doing a show like this and highlighting these things is because I want to provoke that, that thought. I want you to reflect on yourself and I want you to see if any of those feelings come up. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did a lecture at one time dealing with the ugly, ugly characteristic called envy. And in a part of that lecture, he asked the audience, he said, as I go through this, again, I'm paraphrasing words to this effect. He said, as I go through this subject matter, I don't want you to look at anyone else. I just want you to look at you. OK, and he was asking us to look at ourselves to see if we could recognize that characteristic, that ugly, unredeeming characteristic called envy 
within self. I have to say, dear family, as God is my witness, the minister, he's had me cringing on many occasions when he has spoken right into my life and the foolishness and the negativity and the madness that I've done in my life. No question about it. I felt guilty and I've had to fix up and change. But on that occasion, the minister said, I want you to look at you. I could not find that ugly characteristic in myself where I would be envious of another man or another woman based on some gift or something that they have that I wish was mine and I, I wish it so badly that I become murderous in my thought that I would like to do something negative to them because I want that characteristic that they have so badly that I'm envious to the, because the minister teaches us that envy is the mother of murder. And I was relieved mm -hmm. that I could not find that, mm -hmm. that in me. But I'm saying, dear family, Part of the reason for doing these types of shows is to again say, yeah, look at yourself. You see, because if you if you feel that if you find that in you where there is that sense of inferiority, there is that thing where, you know, if somebody shouts at you in the in the street, monkey, at you, you know, you feel, man, you can call me monkey or day long. Do you know why? Because I know that me and that monkey, there's no relationship there, beloved. So why would I be hurt? That's like somebody calling me a car. Oi, car, and I'm going to get upset. Why? You're not talking to me. Evidently, you must be crazy because you're you're talking to somebody else. You may be talking to your own self, maybe. Maybe you're the monkey and you're trying to project it onto somebody else, but you can't hurt me by calling me something that I know I am not. You see what I mean? But if you, if you react in a way to say that you are hurt, mm. come on, man. Think about it, family. How can that hurt you i hate seeing how people get it all upset because some foolish nazi type throws a banana on a football pitch where black people are playing and we're all upset stop it man pick the banana up and dash it back give it back say you drop something it, there should be no pain there unless of course the colonization has gone so deep that we believe what the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar was teaching earlier in the introduction video, that they said they found us in Africa mm. with a bone in our nose swinging through the trees. If that's what we believe, <clears throat> then of course, Somebody can come and call us some stupid name mm -hmm. and we're going to be upset, dear family, because our minds have been colonized. <clears throat> we want to have the mind of God, right. a mind that's his mind, that's pure, that's powerful, that's a mind that can elevate and a mind that can visualize and a mind that can build. Dear family, <clears throat> as proof of what we are saying today, we're only going to look at one recent news story coming out of the continent of Africa. And we will attempt to break down why after over 400 years of death and destruction, at the hands of Europeans. I'm just gonna stop on Europeans because I want that to sink in. Because again, 
you know, we get confused and we don't seem to understand that the people who have been, the people who have been killing us and destroying us for well in excess of 400 years now are primarily Europeans. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that some Arabs didn't get involved at a certain point in the destruction of black Africans. I'm not saying that some Asians are not guilty of doing some evil to us. I'm not saying that some yellow people haven't done something over the years that has ill affected us. Yeah, everybody has had their turn, everybody has had. But I'm saying, man, that in terms of the condition that you and I are in now and that colonized mind, that is from a Eurocentric school that is from that process of 400 years of servitude bondage that was inflicted on us and it continues to this mm -hmm. day because of the scientific nature of the colonization of our minds we're going to attempt to break down why, after over 400 years of death and destruction at the hands of Europeans, we continue to be their willing victims and sacrificial lambs to the slaughter, especially when it comes to being sold out by the so-called African leaders. I just want us to reflect on these so-called African leaders. And this image, again, I wonder how many of us look at an image like this and outside of the context of the Imagination Show would see an image like this and wouldn't see nothing wrong with it at all. Just a couple of nice, white ladies taking care of three black children. Man, oh man, oh man. You know, we're the only people who wholesale, give our children to people who historically have been an enemy to us mm -hmm. and we think nothing of it. And we expect those people to educate our children to babysit them in the crash, to take care of them all day long, to, you know, and then hand them back to us and with no harm done. Man, we, we got some faith, but our faith is so often misplaced and our faith is given to those who literally, more often than not, they abuse us, man. And these poor little children, <laughs> I was looking at their faces. Oh, it doesn't go. No, it doesn't go, beloved. But but to many of us, it's just no big deal. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, we just hand our children over. And again, I always like to remind us of what the Honourable Minister Lewis like on that very profound question the minister asked. If a man won't treat you right, what makes you think that same man will teach you right? Talking about these schools and these mm -hmm. universities and these places that we go, which are Eurocentric in their curricula. And we think that we're gonna be able to go into these institutions and come out smart, come out intelligent enough to be able to claim that we are wise, intelligent people, no. Those institutions are designed to just train us into the up, upholding and the furtherance of a system that designed that educational program in the first place. But it's not there to take you and me to any place or any level that will completely extricate us from the governance and the control of that body, that Eurocentric control mechanism. Now, the minister said something, I'm trying to think of exactly 
how he said it, because I'd like to repeat it here. He said, he who controls the diameter of your learning controls the circumference of your actions. I want you to think about that. He who controls the diameter of your learning, diameter is that which goes through. Diameter of your yeah. learning, diameter of your thinking. Mm -hmm. Who is your educator? Oh. Who is our teacher? He who controls that line of mm -hmm. thought through us, man, mm -hmm. controls how far the circumference of how far we can go, we can go, how far we can progress. Mm -hmm. And all you've got to do is examine some of some of our so-called leaders again. And look what happens anytime they step out of line mm -hmm. according to what the system deems is their limitation or their parameter that they can't go beyond. Mm -hmm. See, this is why when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, I'm a free black man. That's right. That's why we should be really listening mm -hmm. keenly. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should understand what a free black man looks like. Right. What a free black man sounds like. Mm -hmm. And what a free black man has to be willing to endure in a world that is not yet a world that is of our own making but it's a world that's going out. It's a world that's finished. And if we want to see the hastening of its ending and the bringing in of a brand new reality that we bring in, then we have to be about the business of re realizing that they can't be our teachers, especially when it comes to spirituality. Ooh, I think the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that do not allow these people to be your spiritual guide or your spiritual teacher. And there's lots of them setting themselves up as new age gurus and, and they want to teach you about dieting and fasting. Mm -hmm. They want to teach you about yoga. They want to teach you all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. But just be careful because they will only and they can only Definitely. take you so far. Branch knowledge. But there will be a limitation. That's right. Sister Claudia said branch knowledge. There is a big difference between branch knowledge and root knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to get root knowledge, you have to go to the root. You have to go to the originator, you have to go to the God of the universe. You have to find, seek and find those that he has raised mm -hmm. for this time and this dispensation. But you can't start on some little branch over there, it's another branch over there, because it won't, it won't have the essentials. Mm -hmm. So, dear family, I wonder what you think of that That's picture. why we need our own schools. Yeah, I wonder what that picture says to anybody. I wonder, wonder what your thoughts are when you see a picture like that. It's quite sad. Yeah. It's amazing, man. It's amazing how, how that is just so normal, how that's been normalised. And like I said, I, I, I don't know, maybe imagine the two women were black. Mm -hmm. And it was three blonde-haired white children. Mm -hmm. What would be our thoughts then? You see, because I know that we we look after them, we yes. care for them, and so that's not that even. That seems like it's more accepting when it's black women with white children, because that was the reality that we served yes. them, that we raised we raised, raised their them. children. They yes. their children would even be on yes. our breasts. Yes. Wow. Wow. Because we'd look yeah. after everyone. Yes, we certainly did. Dear family, 
I hope everybody is good. We, any... No, well, I was going to say, and that mm -hmm. is the point. We would know how to do white children's hair. Mm -hmm. White women, a lot of them don't have a clue when they have. Black children. Yes, they yeah. don't know what to do with their hair. Yeah. Wow. And you do realise that's a boy. Absolutely. It has become so normal for black people to hand our children over to white people that it is no wonder that the adoption of black children from African countries and Caribbean islands like Haiti has now become a multi-million dollar industry. And there are many horror stories from child sex trafficking to organ trafficking. And like this Hollywood actress, I think her name is Charlize or something like that. Charlize, yeah, they pronounce it. Charlie's Heron. Theron. The Theron. Okay. Theron. Theron. Yeah, Charlie's Theron or something like that. Her name is. You'd recognize her from various films. But like this Hollywood actress dressing the adopted boy, she adopted this boy from South Africa, I think mm -hmm. it was, dressing the adopted boy as a girl and pinning a long blonde wig to the back of his head. Can you see the long blonde yeah, wig? Because according to her, this is what he wants to do. Yeah, because he's his mother in his eyes. Right, but that's the point. Ask the question, why? Mm -hmm. What influence, what has influenced this child? And again, you know, I want to remind you all of that experiment that has been done back in the 50s. And I think they did it again recently yeah. and got the same results where they took the black children yeah. and they gave them a, the white doll and the black doll. Mm -hmm. And they asked them questions about which doll is bad. Yes. And the black child picks the black doll and which mm -hmm. Doll is beautiful, or which doll is good, and it's the white one, and which one is ugly, and it's the black one, and which one is pretty, and it's the mm -hmm. and and on and on and on. And and you gotta ask yourself, why would a black child mm -hmm. have such thought processes mm -hmm. unless something has colonized that child's mm -hmm. mind insidiously? And in such a way that it's literally invisible, but yet it's happening because these are children mm -hmm. that are expressing this. How did they develop that at such an early age where they're already self-hating? Somebody said she is of her father, Yaki. <laughs> Absolutely. She's of her father, the devil. Mm -hmm. And the lust of her father, she shall do dear family i think this other child is also a boy isn't it okay. august i think that other child's yeah, name I yeah yeah you've got them in dresses my goodness man family this is just this is this is one woman but this is a, a, a thing that's all over our planet now. This is happening to black children all over the place. This is real. This ain't no, you know, this ain't no lightweight thing. Okay. But I'm, I'm seeing more and more images of black men dressing as women. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And and it's been, it's it's now in the water. Mm -hmm. It's now in the food. It's in medications mm. that we take where they're feminizing. It's in the weed. Mm. For you weed smokers who are very happy now because the white man is making it less and less um, illegal. Yeah. He is moving closer and closer to a legalization. Mm. And if you got it for personal use and all this, no, let me tell you something. What you are smoking, all this vaping that people are doing. See, they're putting stuff, man. That's right. That is destroying mm. masculinity in men. 
and promoting femininity in men. Go and check out Brother Wesley Muhammad and look at his research, okay, on this process of the emasculation of the black man. It's scientific fact. This is something that's going on. And the emasculation, the opposite, the emasculation of the female. This is the, these people, you, you really think that these people have given up on their idea of white supremacy and such concepts as eugenics and the population control and the elimination of billions of people from the planet because they fear genetic annihilation and they want to remain in control? You think that they've given up on these ideas? No, they haven't, dear family. They've just moved it into another gear, mm -hmm. into another level, into another dimension. And, man. Because they, they know it's the end. Absolutely. And, and listen to, understand what their mentality is. If we can't stay here and continue to rule and dominate, we're going to take as many down with us as we can. That's their mentality. I hope you get it. Dear family, today we are not going to look at anything else other than this story from the perspective and obvious utter despair of this African sister and an African brother also featured later in the video. If I didn't see and hear these things for myself, I think I would really struggle hmm. to believe this is happening in 2023. We're going to watch this sister who goes by the name Abigail Lucy Mary. Okay, <laughs> just think about the names. But she's a beautiful sister. I really do love this sister. She's such a wonderful person. She's somebody that I've seen from time to time uh, from the continent. And I just want you to listen to what she has to say and look also at her body language because this is what I say, you know, the sister really is in obvious, utter despair and I can't blame her. This is 2023 mm -hmm. and, and just look and listen to what she has to say. Majesties, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for always returning. Trust you and yours are well, and you are loving yourself and others like always. Many thanks to all of you for your support, for um, all that you do for this community to keep growing, to our anonymous supporters, channel members, all of you, my subscribers. Thank you so much today. We heavy heart, your majesties. I'm presenting to you these painful reality you hear the way she addresses us she addresses us as your majesties hmm. because she knows who we are okay and we we need to get very very quickly into the knowledge of who we are you know the last time we spoke about ghana was when she received a hundred and two or so over a hundred military vehicles from european union to fight terrorism the sound is a bit low i don't know why it's like that but i hope you uh, yeah let, let us know if you can hear it properly um but she she just mentioned the fact that uh, ghana had been given a hundred uh military vehicles from the european union <laughs> to fight terrorism mm -hmm. and, and and again you see family you got to be just so wary why are these people giving us military vehicles to fight terrorism mm. you know but continue to listen let us know if, if the sound if you can hear that was the last discussion we have about ghana the countries in africa that should be the ones drawing the little ones forward are the ones that are even dragging the efforts of the little ones down this is the painful reality we are faced with by day. And that's what, you hear what she said. The big countries in Africa that should be dragging the little countries up, they're the ones that are dragging the smaller countries down. Because some of the smaller countries, places like Burkina Faso and, 
and, and Mali and Niger. You see, they're, they're, they're relatively small countries um, and they're, they're actually doing a great fight back right now against this colonization and this uh, uh, mentality of domination from Europe on the continent. But when you think about big countries like Ghana and Nigeria, I mean, she's saying that they're more dragging the smaller countries down or dragging Africa down rather than doing what these smaller countries are currently attempting to do. Why I want us to talk about this. Ghana, Akufuado, mm, charitably handed their newly discovered lithium to an Australian company. Did you hear that? Hmm. The, the, the president of Ghana hmm. has basically given an Australian company mining rights to newly discovered lithium in Ghana. Uh, we're talking here about the colonization of the black mind, and we're talking about African leadership, black leadership, whether on the continent or elsewhere. But just think about this, man. Why am I saying he handed it over? It's not that they're not giving anything for it. But when you listen to this whole breakdown of everything, like you get so angry and you feel like going to go squeeze that man out. Why are we not learning? Why are we, I don't know. What is happening? What is happening to the motherland? You have, you, you discovered lithium. Okay, you, 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 you don't have anything to mine that. You, you, you don't have technologies to mine lithium. You don't have anything to help you mine lithium. Leave it there, seated in that ground. Must you take it out? Did you hear what she said? Okay, say, say for instance, where she's saying, say for instance, we don't have the, the, the technology or the techniques to take the lithium out, whatever. Leave it in the, leave it in, in, in the earth. Leave it in the ground. Leave it there. Until we have the expertise, then we'll take it out. But but why are you giving it to an Australian company? And by the way, you see, it's not even like Ghana is necessarily doing business with Australia, the country. No, just an Australian company. Hmm. The, the, the company is on the same level as the nation. As, you got to understand what these leaders, these so-called leaders do with our resources, man. And then they, 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 then we turn around and say, oh, we're going to send some money to Ghana mm -hmm. to put a toilet, an outside toilet for the students in a school because they haven't got a toilet. And where they would normally go toilet is a bush near the school. But now, oh, we in the diaspora, let's send some money so that they can build a toilet, which is basically a, a hole in the ground with some breeze blocks and a little roof. This is, this is what we're doing. But the country has got lithium, mm. extremely valuable and something that is needed for all of this computer and phone technology today. But... We're giving it to an Australian company. Let, 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 let's see. Let's see some more. And if at all you're going to take it out, okay, so that um, the, the country can have some opportunities, can't it be fair enough for your people, like like for the sake of your people, the sufferings of Ghanaians? Can't you be fair enough to make it fifty fifty? I'm not saying anything more than that. She's saying even then, hmm. even do a 50-50 deal where Ghana gets 50% of the profits and the company gets 50% of the profits. No, 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 no. Listen to, listen to the deal, family. Yeah, some of you be like, oh, why not 70, 30? Why not? Let's just, let just leave it at 50-50. Why can't you be fair enough, Akufuado? 
but you are okay to give 87% of your lithium to this Australian company. What kind of deal did you sign? Like, what kind of deal is this? So you only get 13%. Ghana only get 13%. And they are going to mine. 13% of the value of your lithium and you're giving away 87% to an Australian company. And do you understand, dear family, that that 13%, a part of that, the, the bulk of that is going to take care of the president and his little circle and some elites in Ghana but the masses of the people will not benefit one iota. I'm, I'm looking at the poor sister's face, man. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I'm feeling her pain. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling her pain. Uh, I kind of skipped it. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stay there because it's too much. It's too much, dear family. The thing that never ceases to amaze me is just how stubborn some of us are in our self hatred, even after irrefutable truth is made manifest, and we know that we are acting against our own and our own people's best interest you you can show black people oftentimes the reality the mm -hmm. truth you can don't forget we got a man who's been teaching for over for now 68 Six, years. years 68 years 68 years don't forget we, we we've also been exposed to marcus messiah garvey I, when I, I i you know when I first started to grow in consciousness, it was the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Messiah Garvey that I read that literally had me in tears for the days of the reading of that book. I was crying almost every day. And the question that kept on coming into my mind was, how did my father or nobody ever tell me about this man? How, how did I not? know or learn about this and why is it that everything i'm reading from the 20s and the 30s the 1920s and the 1930s is when he was operational and talking about these concepts and asking these questions where is the black man's government where is the black man's high achievers where is this where is that and talking about a black star line, black star line a, a, a fleet of ships and so on and so forth and Africa for the Africans at home and abroad and all of these concepts. And I'm reading it in the early, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And I'm saying, but everything that he was talking about in the 30s this still mm -hmm. pertains today because these things still have to be done today. These things still have not been done. And I'm I'm in tears because I'm thinking, well, what's what's this thing all about? What's this world all about? You know, I heard the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan say, talking about, again, I'm paraphrasing, but he was talking about really the burden of knowledge, the burden of knowing certain things and how it can actually make you sad. Mm -hmm. See, when you go to your bed at night, the minister said he goes to his bed at night sometimes and he cries when he thinks about our condition. See, because people have come among us and they have tried to teach us and extricate us from this terrible condition. But we haven't necessarily acted according to the guidance that they've given and that they've left. And that's why I always emphasize the fact that 
we have a man today. And while he's still with us, because it seems to me that some of us or the vast majority of us, we love to honor people after they've gone. And when they, in a sense, are no longer able to make a demand on us, then we want to honor and worship and respect them in absentinia. But why, why won't we do that when they are here right now, giving us the guidance and the instructions? Why won't we utilize that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and change our condition? Dear family, while on the street one day selling the Final Call newspaper, two extremely black brothers from the motherland who I was in conversation with, they said that not only is Jesus white, like other white people, but he is in fact, and they were pointing at my shirt, my white shirt, because you know, in the nation we wear these beautiful white shirts with our suits and ties. The African brother was pointing at my white shirt. He said, not only is Jesus white like other white people, but he is in fact whiter than that shirt. I said, my God, that for me, that was, that, that was it. I, I could have, I could at that moment have just said, you know what? That's it, man. <laughs> I, I give up. And I mean, and, and believe me, these brothers, they were absolutely sincere yeah. and they, they believed Jammer. These were Bible bashing Christians. Mm -hmm. they, they literally had Bibles with them. Mm -hmm. And, and they were, we were having a, a theological kind of discussion because we were Muslims and we were selling the paper and they came. They weren't buying no paper from us, not interested because mm -hmm. it was all about Jesus. But the bottom line was, not only is Jesus white like other white people, is he is in fact whiter than my shirt. And they were black, black, black. And you know what I concluded having had that conversation? And I've said this in the public in the past, you see, that some of the biggest white supremacists on the planet are blacker than me. Black people. Mm -hmm. But again, this colonization of the mind goes deep, man. Because, and I heard the Honorable Minister Lewis Farquhar talk about black white people. Black white people. And that's what many of us are today. Our whole makeup, our whole mentality is of our enemy because we are operating from his mind. Mm -hmm. So, dear family, in conclusion, you know, I know it's a real struggle for some of us to be able to take on board, you know, what we're trying to impart, what we're trying to share. We're not doing it out of any kind of negativity, any kind of wickedness, any kind of spite. We're really doing it because we honestly want to see our people rise. But we can't unless we are willing to address the difficult issues, those things that a lot of us may not want to talk about, those problems that many of us uh, may suffer from, because these are psychological mm -hmm. problems. These are programs that we have been given and that we are operating from and we don't necessarily appreciate that we have to be deprogrammed okay. okay we have to empty out all of this madness mm -hmm. that has been given to us okay. in order for us to be able to really function properly and one of the things that I've heard over the years is that, you know, I really struggle to take knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a black man. But if a white man says it, hmm. woo! It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, isn't that sad that 
we have to wait for and 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 I've had people ask me the the in terms of the teachings they're looking for they're asking me where can I confirm this yeah, yeah they all say where did you get that yeah like they can go to some library somewhere no this is revelation from God to a black man this is message to the black man but you want some white man to be able to corroborate or or verify or say yeah it's it, it's true you know mm -hmm. well that's kind of, that's where we're going to leave it tonight we're going to we're going to we're going to hear from one of the great evangelical white men by the name of Billy Graham okay mm -hmm. this is one of the most well known white christians that ever walked the face of this earth in the 20th century and you know he taught to thousands and thousands of people all over the planet and you know has carried or garnered tremendous respect from christians all over the world so we'll close out with something from billy graham just to see what your thinking is about what he has to say specifically around this subject matter. And don't you black people ever forget one thing. The man that helped Jesus carry that cross was a black man. And don't ever forget another thing. Jesus belongs to Africa. He was born in that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe. And Jesus was not a white man like me. We don't know what the color of his skin, but it must have been a dark color like the people of his day because he was a man like them. Amen. Don't ever say it's a white man's religion or a black man's religion. It's a world religion. And when Jesus was a little boy and they tried to kill him, his mother brought him to Africa. When he was on the way to the cross to die and he was carrying the cross and he stumbled and fell, it was an African that helped him. He was not a white man. He came from that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe and he probably had a brown skin. Probably. Very much like some of the Indian people here today. <laughs> Because finding a white dude in Galilee in the first century would be like finding Bigfoot riding a unicorn across a rainbow. There's not going to be one there, all right? It's not going to happen. All right, so we know that Jesus is not a white guy. And Jesus was not a white man like me. He was not a white man. He was not a white man. Dear family. <laughs> you know you're getting people saying, no, Billy, you're wrong. He was yeah, white. Yeah. He's white. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, dear family. I pray, you know, that um, what we shared again this evening, that it made sense mm -hmm. and that you can see that there's some psychological um, disengagement that needs to take place, that we have to appreciate this colonization because it wasn't that they just colonized the place physical landmass but they literally colonized our minds when they gave us that white jesus when they've given us all of these images when they've given us these subliminal teachings that basically says that in order for you and i to be successful we have to think and act like them we have to be other than ourselves. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan come to teach us to be ourselves. The uh, founder of the Nation of Islam, Master Farad Muhammad, he said that he could encapsulate the teachings in six words, I believe. And those six words were, accept your own and be yourself. Accept your own and be yourself. Dear family, please determine what is your own mm -hmm. and then accept yourself. Be yourself. 
Sister Claudia, any? I just things? want to correct myself mm -hmm. because I, um, to watch the time and what must be done, it's media.noi.org. Okay, so to watch the 58 yes. part series, yes. it's media.noi.org. Yeah, or you can go on noi.org. Go on noi.org, but, but media.noi.org is how you um, find. The it time all, yeah. and what must be done, and I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that they, you can get it on YouTube no, you as well. Can't. No, have no, they taken, taken it down? They've taken, they've taken it down. Maybe you'll family. get one or two. They've taken it down. Yes, they've they'll taken take it, it down. down. And also, just to say, there was a sister who was asking where can she get hear these teachings, and she was based in Chicago. Wow, sister. <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> Stony Island. Yes, seven. Stony. Seven seventy three fifty one South Stony. Stony Go down to the mosque. Go down to the mosque. Yes, sister. If you're in, yes. if you're in Chicago, sister. Yes, go All down roads there. lead to that address in Stony Island. That's you know? right. And just to say thank you, everyone, for tuning in. As usual, our brother Ismail Sise from Finland. I think Finland. We, there's a lot of brothers and sisters from New York family in new york um did i see texas london mm -hmm. um where else? so many let's see but just thank you all let's no thank you all for tuning in wherever you are in the world it's an honor and pleasure and please listen to noi Tune into NOI.org mm -hmm. and listen to the final call radio. radio. Mm -hmm. That will, these teachings will save your life. Mm -hmm. You don't need any tablets or this, that. You just need the word of God to yeah. tap in. We, we don't take medication in our house, yeah, we, we don't, don't take drugs. Don't. You don't need these things. You don't. You don't family. Now, don't. Please yes. don't. We're not doctors. We're not doctors, so I'm not telling you to go yes. and throw out your drugs yes. now, okay? So I'm just saying that when you clean up That's right. your diet, clean up your life, That's right. you can eventually wean yourself mm. off of these things and That's right. you don't put need these the things away, dear family. Yeah. When you get depressed, just switch on. Do prayer. And switch on final call radio. Mm. You don't need the alcohol. You don't need the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go in that cupboard and eat. Mm. Just tap in, tap into the God Himself. Yeah, it's in you. It's in you, That's man. Right. And you know it already. You you yes. already know it yes. because you know sometimes people will accuse you of having delusions of grandeur, right? right? Because you have these, you've had these dreams where you've seen yourself, you know, doing great, magnificent things. Right. Well, guess what? You don't, you're not giving those dreams and you're not having those visions for mere conjecture. Mm -hmm. You're having them because it's part of you. It's really trying to show you that there's a, there's something greater, right. bigger, more magnificent about you. And you have to start to believe in yourself. And the more you believe in yourself, the more you realize that you have these wonderful um, qualities and attributes that are all a part of you, mm -hmm. that you're gifted, that you've been given something very, very special. Right. As an individual, you are an individual who is gifted. That's right. And you must find your gift and then begin to manifest that mm -hmm. gift and you will absolutely receive no end of blessings, right. dear family. You make the connection with your God. Come on, man. It's, it's right. that time now. Right. It's that time. And listen to Minister Luz Farrakhan. Yeah, listen to the man He's of God. with us right now. That's right. He's present. Listen, there's so many lectures yes. that he's done. So feed yourselves. Millions and millions of millions. words, dear family. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it is um, 17 pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure. While, while we are, while we're here right now, on every square inch of our body, there's approximately 17 pounds of atmospheric pressure pressing down on us. 
what we're taught is that the reason why we don't implode, absolutely collapse under the weight of that atmospheric pressure is because we have the equivalent pressure within and back. And what I'm saying there, family, is please push back. Push back. See, as you go through this life, you will hear so much negativity. Mm -hmm. There's so much of it. Yeah, it, it, can be, it can be overwhelming. Right. My wife is very careful. She, yeah. she doesn't hardly right. watch anything. I, I'm, I'm not like that. I can, I can watch the stuff. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't take it in. It, I, don't, I don't absorb it so it can influence me. I watch it for information purposes. However, don't just take don't let things beat you down. That's right. You have to push back. That's right. So you have to be taking in positivity right. to counteract mm -hmm. the negativity that you will come across in just your daily walk of life. All of the madness that you have to deal with and face. All of these cameras clicking away, catching you in your car just because you go five miles an hour over the speed limit or you stop to drop somebody off in a place where it's so-called no stopping, no parking, all of these fines that keep coming through the door. It's, it's all designed to crush your spirit That's right. and to cause you to think, man, I just, I can't cope. Yeah. Give, give, me, give me a glass of that. No, no. Or I'm me. checking out. Yeah, worse. Yes. Uh, apparently suicide is now a big yes. thing in the black community. Like Never refuge. used to be. Yeah, seek refuge in God. In Allah. Seek refuge in Allah through patience and prayer. That's right. Thank, Thank you, you, family. Thank you. May Allah bless you all as I greet you as we found you in the greeting words of peace once again. Assalamu alaikum. Well,